Recently, I was asked by a local craft maker to print some holders for some custom engraved coasters he sells. These coasters are made of polished slate. He would prefer to have these coasters come with a holder for two reasons. The first one is damage protection. Being made of slate, if they're stacked and knocked over, they're prone to chipping. And second, marketability. It makes for a more professional looking uh, finished product to have six coasters with a holder rather than six loose coasters. Now, I don't have a model for a coaster holder. I could probably easily download one somewhere on the internet, but I'm totally against selling other people work. So I'll have to come up with my own. I was able to borrow a pack of the coasters uh, to take some dimensions and then we'll do a test fit. And from there, we'll see how it goes. So let's take some dimensions. That's 100 millimeters square. And the six coasters together, I'm gonna get the little bumper, is 45 millimeters. Now, you could use your favorite CAD program to work up the design. I'm gonna be using uh, Fusion 360 by Autodesk for this project. Personally, I'm a fan of Autodesk products. Uh, I've been using them since the early 90s in my daytime job as a mechanical designer. What's your go-to CAD program? Drop me a line down in the comments. I think it would be interesting to find out what others are using. Now, I'm gonna do my best to present this in a way that even if you've never used Fusion before, or CAD for that matter, you'll be able to model this. All right, enough chit chat, let's fire up Fusion 360, get modeling. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. I already made a project folder called Coaster Caddy. You do that by clicking on New Project and just entering the name of the project you want to work on. I'm going to go ahead and hide the data panel that maximizes my modeling space. Now I want to go to sketch and I'm going to select a sketch plane. I'm going to pick this one right here and we're in sketch mode. Now I'm going to hit create. I'm going to rectangle, set a rectangle and I'm going to move that right over this circular area and you'll notice it's a uh, green square lights up. Doesn't mean we locked in a bogey. It's just the center of our sketch plane. I'm going to do, click and drag from that point outward and we have a square or a rectangle. It's all independent of each other. You can see how I can change it. Now we're going to lock in some dimensions. I'm going to go with 108 millimeters to maximize the use of my slicer settings in my Pro, Cura profile. 108. And now I'm going to make my top and sides or each leg of this uh, square the same. I'm going to do that by coming up to the constraints and hitting the equal icon. I'm going to click on this line and now this line and now they're the same. You notice that everything turned white instead of that shade of pale blue it means we're all locked in. I'm going to finish the sketch and I'm going to come up and add some thickness to this. I'm going to click on extrude and my uh, sketch plane already lit or my sketched object already drew, uh, highlighted for me. I want this to be four millimeters thick. So I'm going to go with four and it's going to extrude in the direction of the arrow. And there we have it. We actually have a model. Now I need to get some detail going. So let's put on some walls. I'm going to click on sketch. I'm going to click the top surface. And that's my new sketch plane. I'm going to use create and center rectangle again and lock it in the same way. And it's that simple. Now I'm going to add the thickness. I want my walls to be 3.2 millimeters thick. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for both directions. I'm going to add a dimension from this line to the bottom at 3.2 
and that's all there is to that we're going to finish that sketch and we're going back to extrude so we'll click the extrude icon i'm going to click an area between the outside edge of my base and the square we just drew and i'm going to make that 45.6 millimeters high i already know that the total of all six coasters is 45. I want a little bit of a lip at the top. I don't want them sitting flush. So I'm going to go ahead with 45.6. It maximizes the use of my uh, slicer settings. I'm going to start another sketch here on the side so we can add a cutout to get the coasters in and out easily. But this time I'm just going to draw my rectangle randomly. I still want to use the center. I'm going to go ahead and draw that and I'm going to use my constraints. This time I'm going to use the vertical horizontal constraint by clicking on that, clicking the center point of my square rectangle and I'm going to click on the little circle thing down here and that will line them both up vertically. Now I'm going to use a collinear constraint because I want this line on this plane and that's all there is to it. Click the collinear icon and the two lines and you're set. Now I want this cutout to only be 43 millimeters deep because I want a little lip at the bottom too. This will keep it off of the top surface of the base. Now I measured my fat thumb earlier and it measured at 25 millimeters. So I'm going to make the width of my cutout 30 millimeters and that's all there is to that. So we'll hit finish sketch. I'm going to use my extrude, click on that surface and now I'm going to spin my model around to the back side by just clicking that corner up there. I'm going to change my extent type to two object and my operation automatically becomes cut. Fusion smart enough to see that. And that's all there is to that. Now what I want to do is add the same cutout to this other surface perpendicular to it. So I'm too lazy to redraw it. So I'm going to go back to create and I'm going to use circular pattern. I'm going to go ahead and try to click on my object, but I can't. So what I'm going to do is hit features now I can get my cutout. The next thing I want to do is pick an axis that I want to rotate it around and by clicking the axis button in the circular pattern dialog box we see our three axis. I'm going to hit the green one and now I'm going to did I get that? There we go. And now we got a quantity of three at 360 degrees. Well, I only need two cuts total. And that with it being 360 degrees, it's putting them right on top of each other. So I'm changing full to partial, and I'm going to change 180 degrees to 90 degrees. Now what I want to do is in my compute type is change that to identical. That way it'll be an identical cut. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and there we have it. Now that's pretty good right there, and it is functional, but I want to make it pleasing to the eye as well as functional. So I'm going to add a fillet to each one of these uh, corners on the top. So all we've got to do is go around and select all of those lines. And I believe I got them all. And I want that radius to be five millimeters. So I'll just type in five millimeters and that's all there is to that. That looks pretty good, but I want that same effect down at the bottom. So I'm going to start clicking on all of those bottom lines and they're not as easy to get at as the top ones. So spin your model around where you can see them best. I just know I'm missing at least two. This one right here, that one right there, and I'm going to change that to five as well. 
and there we go that's looking a lot better now all of these sharp corners I'm gonna get rid of those by adding a fillet so I'm gonna click on the vertical corners and there's one hiding in the back and we'll get that and I'm gonna change that to two I don't want it to be five we'll start cutting into the inside so we'll change that or set that to two and click OK and there we have it it's looking a lot better and one last thing I'm going to do is get rid of this sharp edge and I'm going to do that with a fillet again I'm going to click fillet and when I click the line this time you'll notice that it selected the entire surface and that's what I like so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that to uh, 1.6 and I'm going to go with 1.2. I don't want it to be that dominating, but it's a nice rounded edge. And I'll click OK. And that's all there is to it. Hit the home button to get you back in your home view. I'm going to add some spots on the bottom to add circular uh, rubber feet. So I'm going to go to sketch. I'm going to click my bottom surface. I'm going to draw four circles randomly. I'm going to dimension my first one. My rubber feet are 10 millimeters in diameter, so I'm going to go with 10.4. And now I'm going to use my equal constraint again. I'm going to click on my circle, and I'm going to click on the other circles and make them all the same size. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make them all line up with each other. So I'm going to use my horizontal vertical constraints. I'm going to click on that icon the center of my first circle with the second circle and lines those up and then we'll come down here to the bottom and we'll do the same now I'm going to come back to my first circle I'm going to click that one and then this one here on the bottom now they're lined vertically and the same thing over here that's great now we got to locate them from the sides I want them to be 12 millimeters from this edge to the center of the circle so I'll put a dimension in there of 12 millimeters and you'll see how they all adjusted. Now I'm going to have to do the same thing here to make that, I want that to be 12 as well. Instead of retyping 12, I'm just going to click this and then that will make it equal. So anytime I change that number 12, it will adjust all of these accordingly. And takes care of that. and this one as well and that's all there is to that I'm going to press enter first then finish my sketch that's looking pretty good so I'm going to now extrude because I want to put like a two millimeter cutout in there so I click all three circles inside of them and you'll notice my arrow is pointing outward if I were to type 25 in there you see how they all come out I don't want that coming out I want a cut that's going inward so I would go with minus 25 but I only want it to be 0.2 millimeters, one layer height. So I'm going to just type in 0.2. And that's just to locate where I'll put the rubber feet. It'll make it easier and more consistent. And that's all there is to it. We'll hit the save. And I'm going to put that in Coaster Caddy. And I'm going to call this Coaster Caddy as well. And I'll go ahead. Once that's saved, we'll export that out as an... Uh, STL by coming down you click export and export it out and we'll print this and see how we did came out pretty good but in my excitement I went and I added the rubber feet so I printed off a second one so I can show you how those markers work we'll do a test fit they fit in pretty good I'm going to pass these on to the end user for review and see if there's any changes they might want. I'm thinking of printing these in like a wood filament. What do you think? Now, I'm not sure how you feel about designing for 3D printing. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this type of content. Uh, maybe we can do more, maybe no more. It's up to you. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments, of course, and hit that like button. Smash the bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time.
And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing. Thanks. Hey, exciting news. The end user got back to me on the coaster holder. And not only was he pleased, he was so pleased that he made me up a custom set of pushing plastic coasters for myself. And he likes the idea of going with the wood filament. Gotta like that.